Before this video starts, I would like to make clear one thing, that this interesting feature that I'm calling it, or whatever the title will be, is not uh, guaranteeing that this will happen. This is only a possibility, but it does seem like the models are mostly agreeing on this, and this is not just one model that's showing this. This is many models, and in the past, I've been fairly right when I've called these interesting features, even in the long range. Uh, consider also subscribing to this channel, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be a, a video on the Long Range Outlook, the Long Range update in terms of August. <clears throat> and we will just be talking about what's a pattern to come for the rest of August. The second half of August, that's what we will be talking about. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Uh, actually, consider subscribing before you do so. Uh, that would be really appreciative. Uh, I always include that and I would really like that. Uh, just something I'd like to add. So right now we're <clears throat> looking at the GFS, the 12Z model one, um, the freshest one in, <clears throat> and uh, this is for some reason it's it's taking a long time to load. Sometimes these model runs uh, take a little bit uh, while to load, but we'll start from the beginning and work our way up. So right now we were experiencing a big cluster of thunderstorms that just went across uh, Iowa and Illinois and uh, southern Wisconsin. <clears throat> this uh, produced a lot of rain, a lot of a lot of thunderstorms, and in Minnesota got impacted as well. It was throughout the night and last e last night evening, lots of thunderstorms, and this kind of brought in <clears throat> a a little bit of cool air, but it warms up pretty quickly. Monday, Tuesday will be rather warm, but we could tell, you know, <clears throat> we could tell that it will be rather chilly based on <clears throat> even looking at the MSLP and the, and uh, an average precipitation rate with the millibars. We don't even have to look at that two meter temperature. You could tell whenever there is a defined, <clears throat> a defined, uh, a defined uh, pattern coming. You can see how these lines are sweeping in. That is usually indicative of a high pressure, which <clears throat> or a low pressure that is sitting. And you can see right there, uh, it's spinning, and that brings chilly winds down into the U.S. So you can see that <clears throat> if we were to take this back again, I wanted to show it right there. You could see uh, the low pressure, and that's just bringing down a bunch of cooler temperatures. And if we were to exactly translate this to two meter temperature anomaly, of course, you could see the cooler temperatures. So let's just stick at this while we're at it. <clears throat> let's uh, continue talking about the temperatures. So again, like I said, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday seem still pretty warm. Um, at least they don't seem as chilly as it will be uh, after Tuesday. You can see it's still warm, but then we see that <clears throat> that the fine cold front uh, coming through, and this is just it's like a blob of cooler air. This was at the beginning of the week, kind of iffy whether it was gonna occur or not. Um, remember that Northeast was only supposed to get impacted by this, but apparently <clears throat> the models are now in fairly good agreement that this will be impacting a lot of the eastern United States. You can see this is already Saturday, Sunday, and then it starts dwindling. Um, you can see the heat is kind of back. The blues are mainly gone. They come back during the day when the day is uh, mostly cloudy or some uh, something of that sort. Or just the nights usually um, during the summer don't get cold. It's usually the days if there's a difference, and that's why the anomalies pick up on that. Um, but this is around average, and then we finally see another defined uh, <clears throat> cold front around the end of August, the last couple of days of August, so weekend, uh, Sunday, September 1st, you could see <clears throat> uh, we are looking at another blast of chillier air. So, I wouldn't say uh, it's all just warm pattern. I mean, right now we were experiencing a cooler pattern, then we're going to experience, again, for Monday, Tuesday, a warmer, and then finally another cooler phase. So, if we were to look at the precip and moisture now, which we were showing you at the beginning, Let's, take, let's stick to MSLP and precip. That's just a better representation of what's to come. <clears throat> and, uh, okay. So, again, this big thunderstorm cluster came through, and this was kind of like a, a magnificent uh, system for the summer. I mean, I was looking at it yesterday at the radar at 12, 1 a.m. in the morning. It's sort of today, technically. And uh, it was, I mean, it was huge. The spin on it was so defined. It was like a winter storm or, you know, one of those fall storms. On a smaller scale, it had a cold front, had a warm front, but it was just in the summer. It was really cool, but also dangerous because it was powerful, strong winds and drenching downpour, uh, downpours. And that allowed um, <clears throat> for a lot of the areas to receive uh, plenty of rain. I know our area got plenty of rain, and so did many, many others. So, <clears throat> uh, as of the, after that, though, not too much uh, of noticeable of a system. And probably the most across the southeast, some pot, spotty uh, thunderstorm downpours, some spotty showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. That's basically <clears throat> pop-up thunderstorms. 
So with the daytime heating, that's what happens. The atmosphere gets more um, <clears throat> unstable, and that just allows for a better formation of thunderstorms. And you can see there is actually a, a cold front <clears throat> that with that cooler air mass that I was showing on the two meter temperature anomaly. You see there's a cold front, and <clears throat> here's the um, here's the culprit behind it. And here is a cold front dragging right down here, and thunderstorms are going to be all throughout this area uh, for. This is this upcoming Thursday, and right now as I'm recording it, it is Sunday. <clears throat> so if we were to click on hour 96 now and move this forward, you can see that in terms of precip, like big precip events, there's going to be a good period of um, quietness in that. That's understandable because there's a big uh, blocking area of cool weather across the port eastern portion of the country. And again, that is correlated with those chillier temperatures. But then as we <clears throat> move forward... Sorry about that. In time, uh, we uh, notice that uh, the, the high pressure starts dwindling and starts breaking down. We're not going to be seeing the cooler temperatures forever, just for a sh limited, not short, I mean, it's going to be a week, <laughs> about a week from, um, from about uh, Wednesday to next Monday. So several days, that's, I think, five four or five, five, six days. So after that breaks down though, you can see the, thun the, th the storms, the thunderstorms take occasion right away. And look at that, another possible big cluster of thunderstorms. Um, you can see right there developing. That is uh, mainly, you know, heavy rain and uh, big thunderstorms, some severe weather. And this is pretty expansive. And that again uh, uh, brings uh, the cold prints way up here to look at that. That's the high pressure. Here's a cold front and the warm front would be up here, but it's not as defined as it would be during the winter, but it's still there. And then look at that, just at the at the nose of this jet stream, <clears throat> which at this time there would be another, uh, if you were to look at the two meter temperature anomalies, which I won't go there right now, but there will be a big um, uh, cool air mass behind this. And, <clears throat> and this would uh, bring... A uh, th basically, and what you want, what you need to know is at the nose of jet streams, which is speed max. That's what it's called. Something like this. That's what the uh, cooler air looks like, and they are put, they are fastest when they are at uh, when they're starting to change from that flat, that horizontal uh, slope to more of that positive slope. And you can see that there, right there, that's exactly where the thunderstorms start exploding. We start seeing a lot of action. We start seeing, <laughs> we start seeing uh, a lot of thunderstorm activity develop. And you know, this this doesn't really happen that much during the winter because during the winter the a atmosphere is just not as explosive as it is during the summer. But look at that. I mean, it explodes probably some severe weather and then it dwindles, obviously. But <clears throat> we have reoccurring. Uh, uh, you notice also how uh, this occurs uh, during the late uh, late time hours and uh, around 11 to 12 o'clock time. So that's like when the day is starting to wind down and the daytime heating is still there, but it's starting to wind down and you can see that's when it starts, it really truly starts developing at around 7, 8 o'clock and it reaches its peak. So it's kind of like a mesoscale cluster, it reaches its peak at 12 o'clock, which, <clears throat> which uh, mesoscale clusters do they they often go throughout the night and weekend in the morning time and you can see that this reoccurs for several days notice how there's another this one's not as big but here's the here's the big lobe of pressure uh, of cooler air you can almost see it by these lines here going up and down like a smiley face or <clears throat> or uh, i don't know what else you want to compare this to like a uh yeah, like a smiley face, really. And if you, uh, again, here's the speed max. This winds start turning up here. They go the fastest and around this zone. And again, you see those thunderstorms exploding. And uh, you could see uh, definitely some severe weather probably occurring. This is very far out, but, here, um, I, you know, the science still applies. It's, you know, maybe not going to occur in the same locations or on the same day at these hours. I'm just saying, you know, I wanted to show you some cool, interesting features about the weather that you know, even if it's in, in the long range, it still occurs uh, in real life, which <laughs> some people think that just because it's long range, it will never happen. It does pretty frequently. And you could notice how there could be possibly a a, a, uh, a fairly big um, combination of two systems, a cold front and it's a low pressure, not really a hurricane, but a low pressure, and they could produce more uh, storm for the northeast. I almost said snow, <laughs> but it's storms, and we're not in that season yet, and I also want to point out that, again, <laughs> if you were to look at the 2 meter temperature anomaly, look at all that cooler air. Uh, you can see uh, that it will be much cooler air, and the 8 to 14 day outlook for the Climate Prediction Center is not really uh, showing that too well. Um, but it definitely is showing a uh, showing area. I mean, you can see it's showing a little bit of blue, and uh, that, in my opinion, is 
actually very representative and the west being a little bit warmer i wouldn't include the east in being the warmer area i would say they're <clears throat> they are uh, gonna be cooler as well but uh, you know that's the climate prediction center they get to say what they want to say i'll show you now the european model quickly because some people think uh what i'm showing is just extremes well those people need to watch the video because in my videos, I usually <clears throat> I show the ensembles and the European as well, so I don't know what they're complaining about, but you know that's what people are. That's how people are. If we were to go uh, to see the 500 millibar uh, for the European model, you could see <clears throat> that same dip across Thursday. That Thursday time frame it starts and it continues um, throughout the weekend, but then uh, the European is quicker for it to warm up. The GFS still has some of this cool air in this location. Uh, the <clears throat> the GFS says this will be quickly out. But uh, notice how <clears throat> the um, the European also introduces one around Tuesday and Wednesday, and this one is pretty significant. Look at that. Uh, some, I mean that that's actually more significant than what the GFS was showing. You could see uh, right there diving down and producing some chillier air. So uh, you know, I do not want to say that this is going to happen, but it's a possibility and it's an interesting feature. Um, so it seems like a cool off is on its way. Um, towards around the last week of August, but up until then, um, basically a period, periods of uh, warmth and coolness, mainly dominated by, well, it depends, it could be in the Midwest, mainly dominated by cooler weather, in the West, mainly dominated by warmth. So, uh, that's it, uh, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new, and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See y'all, bye.